So first things first, we're going to talk about the reflection bounces in 5.3. Again, we're going to go to edit project settings to make sure that we have everything turned on. I'm going to type in hard. We're going to make sure that we have support hardware ray tracing right here and use hardware ray tracing when available. And then the new setting is going to be right here called max reflection bounces. And the first thing you're going to notice in the back right here is that some of the reflections just have a dark spot. But now if I change this from one to two, you're going to see that that bounce is now going to bounce again within. And if I put three, now you have a bounce within the bounce that's reflecting again. It's like a bounceception. Now the next feature in 5.3 is that now we no longer need Lumen GI for reflections to work. So if I go right here, we have 5.4. And if I switch this to reflection, you're going to see that we have reflections right now. But if I switch this off, even though we're going to lose some ambient lights in the background, we are still getting reflections on our character. We don't need GI Lumen for Lumen reflections to work, which is amazing. Okay, so the next feature we're going to be taking a look at is path tracing support for Niagara Fluids. Right there, Niagara Fluid is good. And then what I'll do is I'll go my content browser, right click, FX, Niagara System, new system from a template, click Next. And I'm just going to select uh, 3D Moving Grid Fire, finish that. Now, for this to work in path tracing, we are going to need a console command, and that's going to be r.pathtracing.heterogenominous volume. And I'll put that command on the screen because I know I'm right behind it. So I'm going to go now to lit and path tracing. And now we have that fluid Niagara in path trace mode. Now, additionally, in 5.3, like I made a video about, substrate is now enabled in experimental mode in path tracing, which is super cool. Okay, so the next feature we're going to take a look at is Nanite Landscapes. So in 5.3, you can now Nanite Landscapes. What I'll do is I'll delete this floor because we're going to be creating a new landscape. 8 by 8 is fine. And I'll go to my selection mode, click on that landscape, and in the details panel, actually type Nanite and then build the data. This is now going to make my landscape Nanite. You can pretty much Nanite everything in Unreal Engine 5, which is amazing. And then what I'll do is I'll sculpt this out because now we actually have to rebuild the data. And after that, we're going to go to lit nanite visualization and triangles. And as you can see, that is now nanite once again. The next feature we're going to be taking a look at is nanite support for spline meshes. And the command that you're going to need is r.nanite allow spline meshes equals to one. And, and right here, I just have a smart fence blueprint that I got from the marketplace. And now if I go to the spline and extend the spline and go to lit nanite, triangles and now as you can see we have nanite landscapes and nanite spline meshes that's pretty much it for this video if you like this video go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel i'm trying to get 100,000 subscribers this year like always thanks for watching